Well, first time in nine years that the Preds aren't going to be playing any playoff hockey. I don't know exactly how to feel right now. How do you feel? Oh my God. Hello, Jersey guy. Please don't tell me you packed it in before the last Preds fan reaction video of the season. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we rolling right now? I, I, I didn't notice. I just got to get my mind off of this loss tonight. I can't get over the number of angles that are available on YouTube of Yusuf Parsonen's goal last night. Preds lose 4-3 in heartbreaking fashion in game 82 of the regular season to the Colorado Avalanche. The Preds playoff hopes were already dashed. But alas, Preds Nation was hoping to exact a little bit of revenge against a team that eliminated them from the playoffs last year. But for the second straight year, the Colorado Avalanche have ended the Nashville Predators season with an L. You know, fortunately for us watching this game, that it went basically the full 60 minutes before the game was decided because five minutes into the first, it looked like the Colorado Avalanche were going to run away with it getting a goal less than 30 seconds into the game, and then getting another goal, Nate McKinnon, his first of many in this game, two plus minutes into it. The Colorado Avalanche looked hungry early because they didn't want to play around. They wanted that first seed in the Central Division for the Stanley Cup playoffs so they would be able to avoid Minnesota. Props to Kiefer Sherwood getting the Preds back into this one about six minutes into the first period thinking that maybe the abs won't run away with it even though they're massively out shooting the preds by halfway through the first period i think it was 12 to 1 the only goal that had gone in was the preds only shot sure enough the abs would turn on the burners once again under seven minutes left to go in the first period and nate mckinnon would get his second of the game abs up 3-1 that would be the score after the first period the abs Massively out shooting the Preds 18 to 4. Lankinen, as he has all season, being a reliable backup, being the only reason why the Preds are still within a fighting chance, dare I say a fighting chance, down two goals against this Avs team. You had to think it was over after one period, right? Preds, to their credit, through the last little bit here of the regular season, don't go away with these kids fighting like hell. They play a much more even game in that second period, out shooting the Avs 9-5. And a matter of five minutes, Luki Vangelista gets his seventh of the season, followed five minutes later on the power play. The Preds went one for two while killing off all four Avs penalties in this game. I'll give them credit for that. Five minutes after Luki Vangelista had cut the Avs lead to 3-2, here comes Keith Sherwood right in front of Yorgiev putting one pass, his seventh of the season, and amazingly, in a game that matters a lot more to the Avs than it does the Preds for playoff seeding, this game is tied at three each. Early in the second period, after the Preds killed off a Dante Favreau penalty, what else is new with Favreau? He is what he is at this point. Jake Livingstone takes a potentially unnecessary tripping penalty trying to defend when he could have handled it otherwise against Nieto of the Avalanche, but fortunately his Preds teammates pick him up and they kill off the penalty. I'd like to think that Livingstone will learn going forward how to adapt to different situations so he doesn't put his team on the penalty kill in situations like that in a third period. Between 13 and 12 minutes left to go in the third period during a TV timeout regularly, we stay with the Preds feed and the Preds pay a nice tribute that is played on Bowie Sports South and for the fans in attendance, led by Roman Yossi talking about what David Poyle has meant to the Preds franchise for the last 25 years now. Yes, I know the last couple years haven't been the greatest, but we still have to give David Poyle credit for choosing to come to Nashville over the rumored Toronto that he had a choice to go instead. Staying with this team when it almost got bought by that idiot Jim Balsillie and moved to Hamilton 15 years ago. He was resilient and he did, to his credit, build a competitor in the late 2010s that had won the President's Trophy after nearly 
winning the Stanley Cup when nobody thought they would in the 2016-2017 season. I felt so honored to have met David Poyle six years ago when I went to my first two Preds home games in person and I wish him a happy semi-retirement as I know he is going to stay on with the Preds in a consulting role. Let's fast forward to under two minutes left to go in the third period in regulation when the ultimate heartbreak happens. The Preds with some push trying to get that 4-3 goal to probably send the Preds faithful home happy into the offseason with no playoffs but bad break on abs 2-1-1 on one going in on Lankinen. Nate McKinnon has Miko Rantanen with him. McKinnon uses him as maybe a diversion. He ultimately keeps it, snaps it, beats Lankinen. Nate McKinnon completes the hat trick against the Preds. I'm pretty sure he probably had some big games in that four game sweep last season in the playoffs versus the Preds. The Avs are ahead 4 3. Preds can't surmount any much of a fight as the clock winds down in this one. The Avs have done it. They got what they needed a win, so they will lock up the Central Division and they will face the Seattle Kraken in the first round. As for the conclusion of the season for the Preds, they finished the season on a relative high note going 16-10-2 in their last 18 games of the season. The Preds record is a respectable 42-32-8 for a total of 92 points, the highest total in franchise history for a Preds team that didn't make the playoffs. Let's see what happens in the exit interviews if we get any hints at it. There won't be any immediate roster decisions there, but we'll get the feelings of coach John Hines. Yes, it is reported that he will report to the exit interviews with the Pre Preds press and the players who will talk to the Preds press as well as we will get excerpts, Barry Trotz and David Poyle. It will be interesting who stays with the team moving forward. I got to think a lot of this youthful core will probably make the team at a training camp. I'm thinking about Tommy Novak, possibly Keith or Sherwood, even though those two guys are on two-way contracts. I'd like to see those two still make it out of camp so the Preds won't have to pay as much salary by getting maybe a free agent. They have Lankinen locked up, so their goalie situation is completely taken care of. Askarov should start the season in Milwaukee next year. Now as for the bigger names, we got to wait and see what happens to Matt Duchesne. I know there's unofficial rumors about what happened to his hand. Hopefully it's okay and he's going to be healthy enough to start the season out of training camp. We don't know that for sure yet. He seems in good spirit since he took part in the Preds broadcast tonight. And about Ryan Johansson. That's $8 million for two more seasons. If Ryan Johansson stays with his team, he's going to be in a limited role, probably on the third line. Now, some may argue to buy him out and it would be a low cap it over four seasons at a lower number than his $8 million now. But this team isn't going to be ready for to compete for a Stanley Cup. They could be a playoff contender maybe next year or the year after that. And then Ryan Johansson would be off the books. Personally, I wouldn't mind if they could somehow make it work if they couldn't trade him. Just bite the bullet and keep him on the books for two more seasons. And then he's clean and clear because I don't want this team to compile too many buyouts on the books since they still have Kyle Torres for a few more seasons. But hey, as I've reminded you up to this point, it's not time to be pessimistic because Milwaukee is going to be a playoff contender in the American Hockey League and they're going to get reinforcements. As I already mentioned in Game 81, Igor Athanasiev has been sent down and players who have played in the AHL this season who are now with the Preds are eligible to be sent back down there. Keith or Sherwood will be sent down there to play, I am sure, to make them stronger. Tommy Novak, Luke Evangelista. The Admirals have a good chance, I have to think, as they're one of the top two teams in their division in the American Hockey League, to hopefully redeem what was lost when they were the best team all around in the American Hockey League in the 2019-2020 season of winning the Calder Cup, giving those boys confidence 
to then take it from there and take that youthful playoff experience to future seasons with the Preds parent team. As for the off season for my Predemption channel, I am going to take a slight break, recover, mentally recharge, but you guys aren't going to see me completely disappear or wait until the Preds draft in late June that they host or free agency. Leading up to the draft, I am thinking about some different videos I can make to celebrate the Preds 25th season and the fact that they're hosting the draft for the first time in 20 years. And of course, if there's any breaking Preds news from now until June, I will certainly report on it for you. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like it. You can find my social media by clicking on a channel name. Tell all your friends about Redemption. No spring playoff hockey, Preds Nation? No problem. There's plenty of love to go around from diehard Preds fans rooting for fan favorites who are now playing for other teams this spring.